You have to imagine that Gennady Golovkin is in the twilight of his career right now. He's in the evening of his days. And it's a transitionary or transitional period of his career too because he's no longer on HBO. They've bowed out of boxing. Um, I've heard conflicting reports about his promotional situation because some are saying that he has severed ties with K2 and that he's no longer being represented by Tom Loeffler, who was, you know, one of the K2 representatives who was always working for Gennady Golovkin. I've heard that he's no longer working with them, but I could be wrong. This is just word on a grapevine. And now we see Gennady Golovkin, as the headline states, suing his managers, the Herman brothers, for $3.5 million. Very interesting situation. Um... Says here, Gennady Golovkin wants to be paid what he feels he deserves and not just from DeZon or Al Heyman because, of course, Al Heyman and DeZon are two people who are vying for Gennady Golovkin's signature. Uh, But perhaps he's not going to sign with anybody until the situation with the Herman brothers, his managers, is resolved. It says here he filed a lawsuit against his, okay, they're former managers now. He's no longer managed by them. Okay, so I guess he's free to go ahead and sign with whoever he wants. But, I mean, still, maybe he does want to get the legal situation sorted out. But it tends to be the lawyers of fighters who are going to sort these situations out. The fighters just concentrate on fighting. And, of course, do new deals with whichever promotional outfit they decide to sign with. It says here, he claims in the suit that the Herman brothers took advantage of him for many years by intentionally failing to account for revenue from his fights, taking higher percentages in commissions than they were entitled to accept and failing to work on his behalf for his most recent fights. Golovkin seeks $3.5 million in damages from them. He also wants to terminate the professional partnership. Okay, so it said former managers, but now it says he wants to terminate a professional partnership. So conflicting information here, contradictory information. I'm not sure what's going on, but you know, I recently saw an interview with Johnny Nelson and Johnny Nelson was kind of coming down in favor of promoters when he, you know, with regards to contracts. And he was saying, look, you can't try to negotiate after you've already signed a contract. (laughs) You have to negotiate before you sign a contract. No, no good in trying to do it afterwards. And I hear that. Okay. But with professional boxers, these are not people who are trained in business most of the time. And when you've got these young guys coming through, they're not trained in business. All they know is boxing. They're not business savvy. They're actually very vulnerable because a lot of these guys, their whole life is boxing. They know nothing else. And because they're vulnerable... Because they're not business savvy, because they don't know the game, you get people, managers, promoters coming in and hoodwinking them, taking advantage of their vulnerability, taking advantage of their naivety, smiling and and acting as though they are friends to these fighters. A lot of these fighters don't know the history of some promoters and some managers in terms of what they've done to fighters previously. You know, I'm, I'm often astonished when I see fighters signing with certain promoters and managers, given the history, but I'm of a certain age. You know, I'm old enough to know what these people have been up to in the past. And sometimes I forget, you know, these young fighters, they don't know. They haven't, they haven't been following boxing as long as I've been following boxing. Uh, but I, I, I side with the fighters more often than not because... Very often, the managers and promoters are intentionally taking advantage of them. You see, I'm not somebody who just lets every unethical decision slide because it's just business. And there's a difference between unethical and illegal or unlawful. Okay? Not everything that is legal is ethical. And vice versa, not everything which is illegal is unethical. 
So, you know, when it comes to a fighter promoter relationship or a fighter manager relationship, it's unrealistic, yes. Uh, but I would like to see managers and promoters behave in a more ethical fashion when they're approaching these fighters who they know are naive, who they know are inexperienced. And rather than seeing them as a meal ticket and, oh, let me take advantage of him and let me put sneaky things in the contract which he doesn't understand to try and get a bit of extra money out of him. Rather than do do that, actually have some morals and integrity about you and give fighters fairer deals. And, you know, I hate to bang on it on about it all the time, but when you look at Matchroom and Eddie Hearn, I'm not saying every single deal they give every fighter is great, but they appear to be a lot more upfront with fighters, which is why when fighters leave them, it doesn't end up in a big legal mess. Okay, it was a little different with Barry Hearn back in the days, but with Eddie Hearn these days, I haven't seen him in any legal wranglings with former fighters of his. That's a good sign. That's a sign that the fighters who work with Eddie Hearn have a bit more control over their destiny and a bit more control over their careers in the sense that if the situation between them and Hearn sours, they're not going to be locked down into some kind of legal battle or in a situation where because of the legal situation between them and Hearn, they're unable to fight for several years, like Mikey Garcia was unable to fight when he had the issue with top rank, like uh, Andre Ward was very inactive when he had the issue with Goosen, etc., etc. You see, with somebody like Hearn, you don't see them kind of situations happening. And that's a good sign. And I'd like to see more promoters behaving like that who have a little more ethics about them and they're not always constantly looking for ways to hoodwink naive young fighters who are not business savvy. So that is what Golovkin appears to be accusing his managers or former managers of doing is hoodwinking him and robbing him. You see, some people take this approach that, well, if you're not clever enough to read the legalese, then you can't complain that you got hoodwinked. But again, my position is these guys shouldn't be trying to hoodwink fighters in the first place. Do you understand? They shouldn't be so unscrupulous that they're looking to put these dirty little clauses in contracts to try and see what they can get away with when they've got a a, a fighter like Golovkin, you know, coming from the Eastern Bloc. Clearly not business savvy. You can't expect him to be business savvy. He's a boxer, a young boxer turning professional. But it's it's his fault. The fact that he allegedly or, you know, potentially had unscrupulous managers allegedly robbing him. What, is that his fault? Is he supposed to be a genius in law? Coming to Germany, he don't even speak the language. Can he trust any of the solicitors or or, or the lawyers that he's hiring? Maybe the lawyers that he's hiring have a close relationship to the managers that he's working with. This often happens. People don't realize this. You get a little old boys network that forms in boxing circles. You go to certain lawyers and you think that lawyer is working in your best interest but sometimes if the lawyer is not used to working in boxing he doesn't really understand the contracts that well and he's not seeing things which he should see and in other instances when you hire a lawyer who is very well versed in boxing business he might be friends with your manager (laughs) he might be friends with your promoter and therefore might collude with them in fleecing you out of your money. This is the reality of boxing people. This is what a lot of fans don't understand. So, you know, this is why I side with the fighters more often than not, because I can't blame them. I can't hate them 
for not being business savvy. Do you understand? I can't, I can't hate them for that. I have the problem with the people who are trying to take advantage of the fact that they're not business savvy. These people have no morals, no scruples. And I'm talking in general. I'm not talking specifically about the Herman brothers. It's a lawsuit and I don't know if the Herman brothers are guilty or not. I don't want them to sue me. <laughs> right? So I got no idea whether they're guilty or not. Um, but just in general, this is the situation with fighters. You know, they get taken advantage of all the time. And, um, you know, it's a sad situation. I wish more fighters would be sorry, more promoters and managers would be uh, ethical in their approach. It's like most boxing fans have got a dim view of Don King. You say, oh, Don King's a, a crook and he's ripping fighters off. And he was. But you do realize that a lot of the time, Don King was doing the very same thing I described. He was putting sneaky things into contracts which naive fighters were signing, of course, but these were guys who were from the street. You know, this was in, in the 1980s and 90s during the crack cocaine era. These guys were coming out of the worst ghettos and they didn't know anything about business. Some of these guys were barely literate. A lot of them were dealing with corrupt managers and the managers were, you know, in cahoots with certain promoters and an ugly situation for fighters. That's why so many fighters, particularly from the 80s, they ended up broke because everybody was screwing them over for money. The promoter was screwing them. The manager was screwing them. The, you know, everybody was screwing them. The lawyer was screwing them. At what point do we say, okay, we need people to behave in a more ethical fashion? Rather than putting all the emphasis on the fighters being more smart and more business savvy, we also have to hold the promoters, the managers, the lawyers to account and say, you guys need to be more ethical. You need to stop taking advantage of fighters. You need to have some flipping scruples about you. So anyway, we'll see where this goes. Golovkin soon his managers and whether this is having any effect on the decision that he's making with regards to his promotional situation and his broadcast uh, situation. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. It's happening, I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week, covering a wide variety of controversial topics, as well as live stream Q and A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about two pounds a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalog of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.